Hello, <clears throat> my name is Eleanor East. I'm a senior physiotherapist working in London. I work in a clinic uh, called Movement Perfected. We have uh, uh, cl two clinics, one in the West End of London and one in the city. So we treat a wide range of uh, city workers, desk based workers, uh, sports injuries, weekend warriors, uh, musculoskeletal uh, pain across the spectrum. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about um, my passion in rehabilitation uh, through exercise um, and its effect, the effect of exercise on low back pain and why it's so very important in our uh, treatment and also in the prevention of low back pain. So first slide. During physiotherapy, uh, during our physiotherapy treatment, our goal uh, should be to educate, um, empower and, and help our patients uh, through uh, education and knowledge um, for in their low back pain. This could uh, be uh, introducing spinal mobility, uh, manual therapy, um, general range of uh, motion and restoring normal everyday movement patterns. Um, it's most likely that there is limited to um, very little structural damage that's causing their pain and education is super important here. Uh, usually there are some age related changes on MRI scan but um, and on x-ray but rarely are we seeing um, a severe uh, spinal pathology. So when a patient comes in uh, to discuss their, uh, their pain with you, um, just another um, educational point is uh, to <clears throat> focus on their pain-free periods. Uh, for example, patients will often say um, their pain is intermittent and you'll say, okay, what, what is aggravating your pain? Uh, um, and they'll um, often enough say sitting, um, but actually when I get up, move around, walk around, that's pain free. So here, just make sure you're providing additional encouragement on um, the activities that are uh, and not provoking their pain um, and positions where they're sitting or um, provoking sensitive structures, ensuring they're offloading and positive reinforcement that actually to do the things that aren't causing their pain. <clears throat> A uh, key point uh, in your physiotherapy session that you want to achieve is uh, goals. Um, be goal specific to get them on board. Uh, ensure that you understand if their goal is to run a 5K, that um, that's within reach or limits or return to playing tennis or lifting um, as our physiotherapist is doing here at the gym. Um, it's certainly something um, you should be working building towards. So what is low back pain? Low back pain is defined in the literature as pain and discomfort from the lower back, mar lower back margin to the upper gluteal region, presenting with or without radiation to the lower limbs. So any referrals into the legs. Low back pain is divided into three categories. A specific pa spinal pathology, the nasties, radicular pain or non-specific low back pain, which is the most commonly seen in our clinics. Uh, low back pain is common in both the general and the athletic population and known as the leading cause of disability globally. Most episodes are short lasting and self limiting. However, as you know, persistent and recurrent chronic low back pain is, is common. And uh, that's probably another discussion in itself, a topic in itself. So to begin with, your first and foremost is uh, through a thorough physiotherapy assessment, which is paramount to your patient's uh, journey in, with you. Um, a past medical history, general health and well-being uh, is essential. History and nature of your patient's low back pain. How long have they had it? Have they had uh, multiple episodes or is this their first? What triggers it? And uh, what is it preventing them from doing, i.e. their hobbies, their sports, their family commitments or their work? 
most importantly, what are their goals and what do they expect of you for, um, as a physiotherapist and how we can get them moving forward to return to their previous lifestyles, hobbies and specific uh, sports. So you're looking uh, physically at them, posturally, uh, how are they sitting, uh, standing and moving? Are they sat in your clinic, uh, slumped in a chair, or are they standing and twitching? How do they sit and stand? Are they guarding? Um, or um, and then do they have an antalgic gait po uh, position, walk pattern as they're walking into your clinic room? And then firstly, expose their backs to have a look at the spinal range of motion through various movements. Uh, palpation, is anything sensitive, tender, painful, hypertensive, stiff? Uh, are, they, are they guarding through their muscular tissue? Neurological testing where required. And then be sure to watch them move. Watch them standing on one leg, stabilizing, coordinate how what is their coordination like? Um, testing their muscular strength through their um, trunk muscle muscles, their hips, their general lower limb strength, and their upper limb strength. Uh, functional tests including single leg stand, squatting, sit to stand, stepping up, and even press ups if uh, if that's a, a goal they might have. So establish a working diagnosis. Uh, be sure to um, be on their side as to what you're um, looking for and what you're looking to achieve with them. Make sure it's um, it's a uh, it's both of you discussing these things. It's not the physiotherapist uh, telling the patient what you what they need to achieve. So exercise is widely recognised as an effective treatment. The type and form of exercise varies and when um, discussing uh, injury and, and prevention of injury and prevention, uh, rehabilitation is all about the variety of exercises, but of course incredibly specific to the individual and, their, and the patient's goals. This is designed firstly with the patient's abilities in mind following a thorough assessment. So what's their starting point? Can they stand on one leg? Do they have hips control? Do they have trunk control? Um, are they better off starting in a lying down a supine or crook lying position? Or can you take them through to, to standing um, exercises? Do they have good proprioception? Do they know their, their good body awareness? And what is their mobility um, and move and, and range of motion like? I find uh, getting them th um, working um, through um, movements within your ex within your session helps to uh, restore their confidence and through uh, these movements uh, they soon realize that they can start doing things that they didn't actually uh, realize that they could um, before they came into your clinic room which is incredibly important. Um, ensure you're targeting the whole of the trunk with a variety of exercises uh, within all three planes of motion your frontal plane, your, your posterior plane, and your rotational, your side muscles. Stability in the trunk is key. Um, I, I, I define it as keeping the back still or the trunk still whilst moving the limbs or the ability to transfer loads and force from the upper body to the lower limb and vice versa. You're looking at putting stress and strain on the frame. Um, different types of um, exercise. Um, this is where I would start, um, depending on the patient in front of me, so with um, proprioception exercises, which is the awareness of the body and the joint position within their space through stability, um, balance, control and coordination. Mobility and stretching exercises generally help to make the feel the patient feel better uh, when they realise they can have a gentle stretch and it actually makes them feel 
good rather than they've been something they've been avoiding thinking they shouldn't do you're you're not only looking for range of motion through your lumbar spine but you're looking through range of motion through the shoulders thoracic spine as well as your hip joints i.e above and below the lumbar spine from there, um, I tend to gear towards um, resistance and strength training, whether it's isometric training or, um, or external loads, i.e. therabands or some free weights. Using a step ladder approach to um, trunk activation, movement control with um, i.e. Um, Pilates exercises, um, which is again a form of um, proprioception, balance, control and coordination. And then from here, working towards a return to a exercise program, which could be done at the gym, um, uh, which is inclusive of again, free weights and cardiovascular exercises, whether it be walking, whether it be treadmill walking, whether it be the bike or um, the stepper, whatever, whatever your patient enjoys. Technique and education is key with using free weights or bars to ensure safe and lifting of loads. Um, should be monitored um, initially under a um, personal trainer whom you trust and work closely with or yourself. Technique and education um, is, is incredibly important here as well um, to ensure the safe lifting of loads. And then returning to sports and higher performance. Um, whether it um, return to their five-a-side football pitch, their social tennis club, or whether it be a more um, competitive um, uh, environment, you need to prepare them for this through specific training, bounding, uh, multiple directional instability training, and higher level strength training, as well as higher level cardiovascular um, stress. So graded exposure is key here to um, progressive strengthening and the return to uh, competition or competitive sports. So from reading plenty of journals, there isn't a gold standard exercise. There isn't a one size fits all. Variety is key. Keeping your patient on board is is key and choosing your exercise um, that incorporates all planes of motion and that are functional and um, that uh, uh, functional just talk about that in terms of you can work exercises into your shopping carrying shopping bags increasing load um, making your patient walk a little bit more with their shopping with their pints of milk and bottles of squash and water um, ensure that um, as you progress through your rehabilitation that um, that you encourage them to do more walking to um, uh, build their confidence that it's okay for them to slowly um, lift and carry um, uh, um, bag, shopping bags both sides one-sided working that trunk and putting stresses on it through um, carrying weight through your arms is important for overall strengthening Isolated core exercises isn't as valuable as once thought. So not to just keep patients on the ground. Um, it, uh, um, you should uh, work through those functional ranges we've spoken about. Um, so it should be individual to the patient and gradually exposes the patient's back and body to the various stresses and demands that are required and placed upon them. So if you're if the back if their back can tolerate um, these stresses and the loads you place upon them in treatment, then life will be easier. Low back pain doesn't fit under a one approach fits all. It's complex and multifaceted. So just a discussion through um, uh, based on uh, recent journals and articles. Um, I've got the titles here, but there's a. Uh, um, they're, they're all noted, the journals are noted at the end of the presentation. 
So key points, um, Pilates exercise or movement control exercises have been proven useful in low back pain, patients to improve pain, function and quality of life. Individuals with low back pain appear to have a different activation pattern to control the spine, possibly to compensate for weaknesses uh, due to pain or due to pain inhibition and pain inhibition, I should say. Chronic low back pain patients have impaired control of extensor muscle force and reduced capacity of rapid activation of trunk muscles when compared to asymptomatic people. So, um, <clears throat> So we, um, weaker back muscles, weaker um, posterior back muscles and extensors then lead to increasing in um, inflection. And if you've got a desk-based job, you want to resist that slump flexion posture. Through Pilates, there was a significant increase in the flexibility of the posterior muscles of the trunk and lower limbs, as well as muscular endurance. Pilates exercises applied twice a week for eight weeks led to the same therapeutic effect in people with non-specific low back pain and healthy individual in individuals. This concludes that the protocol proposed is effective for the management of non-specific low back pain, as well as the prevention of um, of low back pain in asymptomatic individuals. So cycling, there was a great recent journal on cyclists, cyclists who did not report back pain. So healthy um, individuals had greater intervertebral disc height, better um, intervertebral disc hydration, hypertrophy of the psoas muscle, lower muscle fat content and high isometric muscle endurance than non-sporting controls who also didn't have a history of spinal pathology, who were also healthy backs, so to say. High volume cyclists had better intervertebral disc tissue quality than otherwise healthy but non-sporting people. The nucleus pulposus develops hydrostatic pressure during spinal loading with the collagen rings of the annulus fibrosus acting as a restraint. In conclusion, high volume cyclists displayed the following benefits. Greater intervertebral disc height with better hydration, in particular of the nucleus pulposus. Similar or a superior paraspinal muscle size with lower fat content compared with non-sporting controls. These, this data supports the notion that cycling in and of itself is not detrimental to the spine, rather by contrast may be associated with beneficials beneficial changes of the spine. So cycling as well as a cardiovascular exercise also helps with your disc tissue. Bonus. So free weight uh, resistance training intervention on pain and squat biomechanics. Key points, those with low back pain demonstrate protective guarding per, um, behavior through a squat, which stiffen up the surrounding musculature higher levels of fat infiltration and reduced cross-sectional areas of the lumbus paraspinal muscles so um, less muscular muscle mass in the lower lumbar paraspinal muscles most articles have identified that resistance training with free weights can alter the fear related aspects of rehabilitation with back pain which will increase patient activity levels Changes in fat infiltration was identified, highlighting that changes are possible across comorbidities, showing that we can make a difference if we get these patients working against resistance, under our guidance, using free weights, we can alter their fat infiltration and decrease their, um, their fat and increase their muscle mass and their lumbar spine. Positive outcomes include um, improvement in quality of life, strength, endurance and lumbar paraspinal muscle quality in patients with low back pain were seen after 16 weeks free weight exercise plan. So you do really have to get these patients on board for the long 
game. And I often explain to them this, um, it's quite key that it's, pay, uh, and this goes alongside your pay, um, patient expectations and goals. It's not a four week, it's not a six week um, exercise plan and a quick fix. They need to be in this, uh, you know, for the, for the long term. 16 weeks is a long time. Not that they need to be under physiotherapy and your guidance, but of course they will need to check in and ensure um, that they're doing their exercise correctly and they're also progressing. Significant improvement in strength endurance during the back extension test was observed, which is indicative of an increased ability to resist lumbar flexion, which suggests an improved conditioning of lumbar extensors. This is what we discussed earlier. If you have a patient who spends a lot of time sitting at their desk, you need great strong extensors to resist that slump and that flexion and the shortened quadratus lumborum tissues. So chronic low back pain is a complex and multifactorial condition with both disability and pain linked to physical, neurophysiological, psychological and social factors. Physical and neurophysiological factors that have been found to associate with chronic low back pain related disability include lumbar extensor strength deficits and increased lumbar multifidus size. Sorry, decreased lumbar multifidus size. Diminished movement coordination between the trunk and the lower limbs during lifting has been associated with the development of lower of chronic low back pain. People with one-sided unilateral chronic low back pain display significantly reduced size of the lumbar multifidus on the symptomatic side of the lumbar spine compared with the asymptomatic sign side. So again, demonstrating pain inhibition. Differences in lumbar muscle tissue have been demonstrated in chronic low back pain. MRI studies have demonstrated that chronic low back pain patients have increased fat infiltration and decrease in cross-sectional area of their rectus spinae and multi lumbar multifidus muscles. Again, I don't think you can, this can, this is just clear black and white that low back pain patients have weakness, decreased muscle mass, um, decreased muscular size, of pain inhibition in their trunk, their lumbar extensors, lumbar multifidus, erector spina and paraspinal, which means we need to get them, we need to exercise with these patients and get them on board with the exercise program involving proprioception, stability, balance coordination and strength training. Exercises, the fun bit. Okay, so I've put together a plan of uh, seven exercises here that I'm going to share my videos with you and uh, I'll tell you why I, um, I rate these exercises. As I've said before, it's very specific to the patient what they can do, but I'll talk you through why I've chosen these. The bow and arrow. So it's a rotational um, exercise um, through the lumbar spine, as well as getting a hip stretch. So we discussed increasing um, hip range of motion, lumbar range of motion, thoracic, and some cervical and shoulder uh, motion in there. Uh, the quadratus lumborum, especially in sitting patients, becomes shortened and tight, uh, quadratus, and this is a good stretch of that, uh, of that QL. It's simple to, and it opens uh, up the lower back and it provides an immediate uh, stretch. So lying on your side with bent knees, placing your arms outstretched to one side, opening up the top arm as if you're pulling the string of a bow, Try to touch the floor on the opposite side with your elbow, opening up your chest. You also get a great pec, pec stretch here. Brilliant for those sat at their desk for long hours. Hold for a few seconds. Try keeping that knee down. You can see my knee is creeping up. You're trying to keep the, both the knee and the hand on the floor. And let that stop. 
So another mobility exercise, we have the cat and the cow. This um, exercise, um, you're looking again at thoracic uh, motion, lumbar spine motion. And I'm gently starting to um, increase some awareness, uh, proprioceptive awareness through my arms, my shoulders and my knees. Uh, it's four point points, so point contacts with the floor. And also, as I draw up here, pull my belly button up and towards my spine to activate uh, my lower abdominal musculature and also my um, multifidi. And you can see that my low, my low spine and my thoracic get a great stretch here. Great. Move that on, sorry. Uh, the dying bug. So again, I'm lying, I'm, I'm lying on the floor here. I've got contact with the floor. Uh, great in patients who um, have um, confidence issues of being in standing. They're taking up uh, floor space and feeling the contact with the floor. So again, I'm learning to, uh, the patient is learning to activate the deep spinal stabilizers, again, at the transverse abdominus. Um, and this is a stepping stone to more dynamic exercises. As with all core stabilization exercises, you must progress them to more functional and weight-bearing exercises. To perform this movement, sink your belly button towards your spine to engage your core. You should feel that your lower back is glued to the floor, rooted, those, that pelvis is rooted to the mat. From there, with the trunk still, um, move one hand and one arm and one leg out away from your body and then alternate left to right slowly and controlly and control breathing through the motion. And the key points are that you're keeping your rib cage and your pelvis down onto the ground and you'll feel great stretch, some hip movement and again some shoulder range of motion. The glute bridge. So this is a popular one. Articulating through the spinal segments. So you get movement and mobility through the spine. Taking great big deep breath is important and rolling up and down. So um, you're working against the mat, feeling the mat as you roll the spinal segment up and down. Um, this is suitable for beginners, depending on the range, even if they can just lift up a little through to intermediate level. You can use bands around the knees, you can use weights in the hands, or you can use boxes to place your feet upon. Um, so initiates this initiates gluteal activation through the hips, uh, paraspinal muscles at the back, and some and some deep core muscles as well. So lightly press into the floor, low, uh, using your lower abdominals, driving through the heels to initiate a hip lift, where you up to where you feel comfortable and pain free. Keep the pelvis still and stable, and hold this for two to three seconds. Slowly lower the spinal segments back down to the floor. The hover. So again, I've got uh, four contacts, four points of contact, my hands and my feet pressing against the floor to develop proprioception. This is an isometric contraction of the, the core. So pressing through the hands, narrowing the waist, deepening the abdominals, so activating those deep spinal stability muscles, activating the back muscles and some hip muscles to lift. Superman. So one of my favorites. This also helps with neural mobility um, as you get in quite a nice stretch through the back of the legs, through the hips, shoulder mobility, 
hip mobility and spinal stability. So begin on your hands and knees again. So again, starting with the four points of contact, uh, practice lifting one hand and the opposite knee starting with just an inch or two off the floor if patients aren't quite ready to go to the full range as I'm in here. The wider you are with the hands and the feet, the easier to balance and the more narrower, the more the challenge it can be. You can also add bands to increase resistance here. So you're, you're again sending one arm and one leg out to uh, form a straight line from the hand to the foot. You can see my leg is slightly increased, which has caused a little dip in my back. That You don't actually want that, but it's quite hard to see what I'm doing when I'm doing it myself. So you will, if uh, the dip and the sag is happening in the lower back, just take the hip or don't take it quite as high and getting carried away there. So lowering it down, ensuring you've got that glute activated. Uh, you've also got some good shoulder blade action going on here. Watch out for any rotating of the, sh of the trunk or shrugging of the shoulders. Sometimes your shoulders will come up towards the ears, indicating weakness in your in lower, in them, their shoulder. Shoulders. So one of my absolute favorites, um, the Romanian single leg Romanian deadlift. This can be used um, as a weight, people think of it as a weighted exercise, but um, here you can see hip mobility, hinging through the hips, stability through the hips, balance and coordination. Um, working the core to, to stand onto the one leg. So you can use this as I said, as a, um, a beginner through to full on advanced uh, pro with weight with weights. It targets the full posterior train, bottom, uh, the, the glutes, hips, hamstrings, calves, and a form of um, a nerve mobility as well. Um, hip extension plays a major dominant role in movement. As we were talking earlier, uh, hip extension key for lower back pain patients as well. Um, you need hip, hip extension for walking, hiking, running and cycling. And so often most of our day is spent sitting with very limited hip extension. The squat all around full body exercise um, encompassing legs, love it, hips, hip mobility, glutes, spinal stability here, and um, and you can make it as hard as you can. You can use bands around the knees. You can use weight, weights in your hands. Um, you can go as low as you want to, depending on knees, or you can stay at a mini squat level. It's functional. You need to sit to stand on a daily basis, and it just targets um, all the lower limb ex muscles and upper limb as you improve and as you get stronger holding on to weights. So balance we discussed earlier on, once your patient is up and standing, um, key points are so they can stand on one leg, you're looking for good hip control, you're looking for hip stability and you're stressing your frame. So I'm stressing my trunk by holding on to weights. I'm also increasing uh, grip strength here, which is key. And you're holding as long as you can. You can progress this by walking with the weights. It's very functional because we need to carry things. And just as it says in the slide here, simple art of standing on one leg challenges sensory symptoms, including vision, somatosensory, i.e. proprioception, touch, pressure, vibration, muscular stretch, and your vestibular system. So it goes without saying, balance exercises are key. And I just missed the slide because I double clicked um, of references. Um, that was on the last slide. It's available uh, for you to have a look at as well. That was my uh, 
quick trip into my favorite exercises that I use through um, rehabilitation. That's me. That's my colleague Paula, and uh, this is uh, details our address, the addresses of our clinic. Please get in touch at info at, at movementperfected.com and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.